Clearly, the rise in obesity in the last uh, 20 or 30 years has been because of changes in behavior, not changes in genes. Our genes haven't changed at all in the last 20 or 30 years, maybe a fraction of a percent, if any. So it's not genetic, it's changes in lifestyle. The statistics are out there. 60% of Americans are dying from diet-related illnesses. That means the food we eat is killing us and making us sick. You know, obesity, cancer, heart disease, all those things. My great-grandpa, you know, he died of a heart attack. He had four heart attacks and he died on his fifth. I think he's at an age where he thinks, you know, like all kids do, that he's invincible and um, that it won't affect him. I think for a teenager it's definitely hard to be more healthy if your family isn't because you learn from them and if your mom's feeding you, you're probably going to eat what she's cooking or what she's buying. Rock stars are like my favorite. It's the big can of rock star. It'll last me like two hours. It's just, you know, like she likes monsters, you know, just because they're monsters. And one of the reasons we choose like rock stars and monsters and stuff like that is because, you know, they're so well advertised because, you know, every concert I go to, it's always sponsored by, like, rock star, monster, some kind of energy drink. With kids who come in for breakfast, they have a soda and some chips and some Reese's peanut butter cups. I mean, that's their breakfast. And by about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, they're putting their head down, they're grouchy, they can't focus because they're hungry. I think the the impact of their nutrition is far more significant than most people realize, um, especially in the classroom, in terms of them being able to learn and to focus. I was like frustrated at myself, and I thought that like I couldn't lose this weight. I was not eating right. I was like overweight and everything. Didn't want to do anything. Like didn't want to hang out with people. Just wanted to stay home. If I didn't get selected for Bright Orange, I would probably still be eating at McDonald's. The amount of information out there is really confusing and this is, you know, this is the best message is to get these kids connected to this kind of food again. And you just can't imagine how much sinks in with a little bit of exposure to cooking, you know, a little, then coming to the farm and seeing where the food's coming from. That's all it takes. It's like one catalyst like that can entirely shift the way a kid thinks about food. The, the real question is, um, can we address obesity in an era of processed food? And I suspect that the, the companies would say, yes, you know, we're ideally suited for that. The challenge for those companies is going to be reduced reliance in some respects on the current processed foods, which tend to be pretty calorically dense foods. Anytime you see a commercial for like healthy cereals, it's for women who want to lose weight. It's for older people who want to control their cholesterol. It's not for kids. Why should the private sector be interested in pediatric obesity? Because it's a $100 billion business opportunity. What really motivates people, what's sustainable, is joy of living, not fear of dying. And looking and enjoying life, pleasure and joy and ecstasy are what are sustainable, not austerity and deprivation and uh, not enjoying life. This rise in, in obesity in, in both this country and around the world and other chronic diseases is a relatively re recent phenomenon and so therefore if we cause it we can change that.